Hello, cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Okay, let's get started. I thought we needed a fun or at least a not so serious video. So here it is, part two of the Waste Not Want Not crafting series. Knitting and crocheting are two skills that are coming back. Thank goodness. And although they're not cheap, or rather potentially they're not cheap, because they can be very expensive hobbies or crafts or skills, whatever you want to call them, if you're starting from scratch, they are still doable on a budget. Now, you will need um, yarn, needles, patterns at the very least to get started. And you'll need to, somewhere to get them, somewhere to buy them. Now, some of my knitting needles and crochet hooks I've had since I was very young. Some of my mother's and others I've bought. But I haven't bought them new because, well, even when I wasn't on such a tight budget, new knitting needles and crochet hooks were terribly expensive and they still are. I've told you a lie and I'll get back to that in a minute. So remember, I have to come back and apologise. Now, op shops are the best place to find knitting needles and crochet hooks. 20 cents a pair, 30 cents a pair, usually around anywhere up to 50 cents a pair for, or for knitting needles or a hook at my favourite op shop. And I always, always look to see what they have. Now I'm going to quickly explain my lie. I have bought new crochet hooks. Last year, Aldi had sets of crochet hooks as a special buy, and they were really, really cheap. Um, pretty sure I picked up this little set, I saw it on the desk, for $7.99. It was really, really cheap. It's a nifty little um, pleather <laughs> um, zip case, and it keeps all the knitting needles together, uh, crochet hooks together, see, like that, and I love it. Now, I think it must have been around Mother's Day when you have all the craft things. Anyway, I did buy my set, sell a full set of crochet hooks in a little carry packet. And it has been so handy because this travels with me. Um, because when we're traveling, I have knitting or crochet work to do in the car. You can get an awful lot done when you're stuck in the car for a couple of hours. So knitting and crochet is a good way to keep your hands busy and pass the time when you're a passenger. I've got a bit of stress that when you're a passenger, not the driver. Now, another place that has been a wonderful source of knitting needles for me is eBay. Um, a while back, $10 bought me a huge bundle of various size needles. They came and... Once I sorted them and put them in the pairs, I had 37 pairs of knitting needles for $10. I had, they were all sizes and all lengths, which was really, really good. Now, when I do buy secondhand needles, I bring them home, I put them in the kitchen sink with some hot water and a squirt of detergent, and I let them soak for a while. Then I'll give them a wipe over with a dishcloth I have a handy dandy dishcloth here with one of my handy dandy knitted dishcloths. Give them a wipe over and let them dry. And I do that just to make sure they're clean when they go into my knitting bag. Now, once you have your needles, you need yarn and patterns. Well, yarn is expensive. Pure wool is very expensive. Cotton is expensive. Even synthetic yarns are expensive. I used to do a lot of knitting with Peyton's Feather Soft Yarn. Remember the 3.4 ply baby yarn? It was beautiful to knit with. Soft for new baby skin came in gorgeous colours and sadly it's been discontinued. And I think it's been replaced with a yarn called <sighs> Baby Soft. Baby Soft, something like that. Um, I can't quite remember, but it comes in a big ball where the... Um, Feather Soft was in smaller 25 gram balls. Um, this is in, I think, 50 gram or 100 gram balls. 
Now, there are cheaper synthetic yarns on the market and they have their place. I have some here. This is one. It's 100% polyester. And I think I got it on sale at Linkraft. Another frugal place to get yarn is online. Um, you need to factor in the cost of shipping, but you can pick up some good deals online. I do most of my knitting these days in either cotton um, or pure wool. And if it's cotton, I buy it online or from a local discount store, depending on what it's for. Um, sometimes I'll find it in op shops, but not often. Now, we've talked about um, buying knitted garments and unravelling them for the yarn and knitting them into new jump, um, jumpers and cardies and things. This isn't a new idea. It's been done probably since knitting was invented. It's, you know, it's a really good source of budget-friendly yarn. One hint, though, is try and get the jumper that you're going to pull apart to be a couple of sizes bigger than the one you're going to knit to make sure you have enough yarn. Now, right now, I'm working my way through my stash of wools. And there's enough to keep me busy for a couple of years because my mum was a great knitter. She was a beautiful knitter. And so she was never without knitting needles in her hands if she was sitting. So I've inherited all her yarns. And I still keep my um, eyes open for bargains, though, because you know, yarn is expensive. We need to get it within our budget. Now, the only thing I, um, the only time I waver from that is with my dishcloths. Now, these are my dishcloths, or this is one dishcloth. I am very, very particular about the yarn I use for my dishcloths. I use... Here we go, I'll show you. I think you saw me using some at the beginning because I've got another one on the go. I use this Burnett Handicrafter in these big balls. It is my favourite. It is not cheap. It is very expensive. It has gone up twice in the last year. But it knits beautiful dishcloths. It knits beautiful dishcloths that are not only pretty, but they are strong and sturdy and tough and they don't fade. And, you know, if I'm needing something to sell, I like it to be value for money. So, yes, my dishcloths are expensive to buy, but that's because the yarn is expensive and it is worth every cent. Trust me. For a decent dishcloth, it is worth every cent for the quality. Now, I get mine from American Yarns online. Sometimes I can order from Yarn Over. They are located in Queensland, again, online. That's my dishcloth yarn. That's the one thing I will not waver from. If I can't get it, and there was a while during the... Um, lockdowns and pandemic when it was very hard to get and I was starting to despair. I can't get it. I don't know what I'll do. Stop knitting dishcloths. Now, I like to use crochet cotton, you know, crochet cotton, regular four-ply crochet cotton to work the tops of tea towels or um, the borders on face washes. Um, the doilies and coasters, I haven't got any doilies but this is one of a set of coasters that I'm knitting, uh, crocheting. I use just four ply crochet cotton. Now this one says Australian made. How's that? Came from a two dollar shop. It's nice and strong. It does what it's supposed to do and it's readily available. Now again it could get very expensive if I let it. And even my cheap cottons have gone up in price. Now, I could, if I you know, didn't want to go hunting for this, get this brand one, which is Payton's, but he's four times the price. Why would I want to pay four times the price 
when I can get this. Doesn't make sense to me, especially when this is just as good. Now I get usually get this type of cotton. Um, there's that one, or there's these Porter Crafts from a store called Arthur Daly's. It's a local discount um, store not too far from me. It's under three dollars a ball, which is pretty pretty cheap for new 100% cotton yarn. That's it's a really good price. Um, sometimes a bag of wools or cottons will come up on marketplace for a reasonable price, and I always look. I always always look. I don't always buy. But I always look, and if it is something I will use, not something I, I could use or something that I might like, but something I will definitely use, then if I've got any money in my um, craft account, I'll make an offer for it. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. If I don't get it, then you know what? I wasn't meant to have it. For patterns, oh my goodness, patterns. Don't try and buy them. They're really expensive pattern books. But I'm using pattern books that my mother used to knit for me as a baby and as a child. Um, and some of the pattern books I'm knitting from are ones that I bought when our children were babies and toddlers and little. I've also picked up pattern books really, really cheaply from op shops. Great source of pattern books. But I have a good collection too that have come from magazines over the years that have been ripped out. Now, the English Women's Weekly has beautiful knitting patterns. And my mum used to get the English Women's Weekly every week without fail. So I have quite a few um, that I've pulled out of that magazine over the years. Patterns and Recipes, best magazine ever. Um, Family Circle magazine, do you remember? Is it still around? I don't know. It used to have lovely knitting and crochet patterns, usually mostly for um, blankets and throws and things like that. Um, but I'd pull them out and keep them. Great sources. But these days, in our modern world, online is the way to go. Um, there's some patterns in our tip store. You know, if you're not sure of a stitch or you even don't know how to knit or crochet, you don't know where to begin, look online because there are websites and channels dedicated to teaching you how to knit, how to crochet, what the new stitches are. Millions of them. Um, some of the bigger ones that spring to mind are Ravelry, Lion Brand, Lovecrafts, The Inspirations. They're all good sources of free knitting and crochet patterns. YouTube is a great source of tutorials. Now, I learned to crochet doilies um, 2020, that summer, by watching YouTube tutorials online. <laughs> They're free. Most of them were easy to follow. And if it wasn't, then I could click out of it and find something that was easy to follow and best of all, I could just stop the video if I needed to, to catch up. Well, off the top of my head, I can't think of any more ideas. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, though, that as soon as I stop recording, I'll hit that stop button and they'll all go boom, 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 boom. It'll be like, you know, the phone going off once you turn it on again. Um, they'll all pop into my head. Anyway, if you have a great way to save on knitting or crochet, please share it with us in the comments section below me. It's good to share and I can't wait to learn some new money-saving tips um, so that I can enjoy my knitting and crocheting within my budget. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you know someone who might like this video or who might like to know about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button to send them the link. And before I go, again, if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, click that subscribe button. Then click the bell and select how often you want to be notified of new videos on our channel. It helps YouTube 
but more importantly it helps our channel to be recognized more easily and the easier it is to find us the easier it is to spread the message that it is not only okay to live debt free cashed up and laughing but it can still be done even in today's crazy world happy cheap skating everyone i'll see you next time